guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna make a cute little dress that I'm super excited about because it's gonna be, you know, just a little cute, historical inspired, beautiful dress. And I can't wait to start. Grab your sewing utensils and let's get started. Okay, so this is my fabric. Look at this fabric. This is also a jacquard. I don't know what's up with that lately, but I am really into jacquard at the moment. I got this fabric over on Etsy, so I also got the beaded fabric from last week's uh, video that you can watch up here, also from Etsy. It seems like there are a lot of really, really nice fabrics up there and didn't even know about that, but it's on my radar right now, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in getting something similar. I already cut out my pattern pieces, and put interfacing on there. I also already cut out my lining which I will be using this beautiful green satin for because I think they will look really nicely together as obviously the background color is kind of similar to this one right here. It's a bit more yellow. This is a bit more of a cold green but I think that's gonna be really nice. Same goes to the uh, skirt because I didn't have too much of the fabric because it also laid only 70 centimeters wide so I had to you know double the fabric and therefore lost lost half of the fabric that I was hoping for I guess but nevertheless it worked out fine but I still had to work around a bit of a shorter skirt and my solution this is the sleeve my solution is to make a double layered skirt so as you can see right here, this is the whole width of the fabric. It's only 70 centimeters. And this is only 45 centimeters long, so super short, because also my waist sits higher than my natural waist in this pattern. It's more of an empire waist. That's why I also cut out this piece right here, which measures 50 centimeters plus seam allowance. This one is 43 centimeters plus seam allowance. So it's a short bit longer, I guess, and I hope that that's gonna be covering enough. If not, I need to put ruffles on, which I'm fine with too. Obviously, I can't put ruffles on in this fabric because I don't have anything anymore, but then I will just resort to ruffles in this kind of fabric, and that should be fine as well. Now, in the front of my bodice of this dress, I'm going to do a lacing. The zipper is going to sit in the center back, so the lacing is just a decorative detail. I already marked the placements for my loops. I already prepared. This is a satin band. It's 1.5 centimeters thick. I also used that for my jacquard dress that I posted, I think, two weeks ago, the green one. Check it out up here. I used this band for the shoulder straps to tie them. And I just folded it in half and top stitched it to secure it. And I will be using this as small little loops that are gonna sit at the points right there. So this is gonna look like this. And then we can use that to lace up the detail in the front. And obviously you can also use that to just tighten the dress a tiny bit more if it doesn't fit perfectly, perfectly, you know? But that's basically just a detail. Yeah, with that, we're gonna get started. We're gonna use the sewing method that I wanted to use for my dirndl. This is also similar to a dirndl actually, <laughs> because the back is so high closure and the front is low, but that's just the best way to work around the short straps, otherwise they would just fall down constantly because the sleeves are ginormous, so there is a lot of weight on them, and to prevent anything from falling down all the time, we have a high closure back, because then it just can't, it has to stay up, and I think that makes everybody happier, and it also looks really nice. And we're gonna make everything and finish everything up and leave the side seams open, and then we're gonna put lining and uh, fashion fabric together, and afterwards close the side seams. That's gonna be the nicest and easiest way and look because we only have two overlock seams in the bodice that you can see. So that's the plan. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing that I did was to cut out eight 
pieces to form the loops for my front lacing. I did five centimeters wide because I feel like that's gonna look really nicely once sewn in. So it's gonna be just a teeny tiny loop. What I will be doing is to fix that into place here at my front lacing panel. That's what I call it for the lack of a better name for that panel. And we're gonna put right sides onto the seam. Now I have experimented with two different thread colors, black and then like a turquoise. And I like the black better. So I'm gonna put the this way onto my pieces and then just bar tack them in place inside my seam allowance because then afterwards once I put the front panel on there it's gonna look really nicely and the black thread will sit on the right side. And this is the result. So now the front panel or like the front lacing panel is ready to be sewn onto the front panel that is still two pieces because of how my fabric is made. I had to cut it in two pieces. You can obviously do a center front fold if you want to. I'm quickly just gonna close my center front. Okay, now with that done, we can close this dividing seam right here by just putting right sides together on both of the sides and sew this together. Okay, and to just make the lacing here sit correctly, we have to iron the seam allowance towards the side seam, so away from the center front. So I'm just gonna go over this really quickly. So I'm just gonna go next to it, leave like the small triangles out as much as possible. It's fine if you don't do that. Now we're gonna add the side front pieces as well and continue with the whole bodice. Okay, to put the front together, we're just gonna take our side pieces and you're gonna find notches for the bust and then also where this stops, somewhere up here. Now, when we put this together, we're gonna put right sides together as per usual, but if you go up words here. You're gonna find the notch where the front panel stops and that's gonna be one centimeter lower than the raw edge right here of the front panel. You need to stop right there, so where the notch is. I'm gonna put a needle in here so that you can see right here one centimeter in from all sides, that is your stitching line. Because in order to turn everything right sides out in the end, once the lining is in place, you're gonna have to either cut into that seam and therefore weaken the whole bodice, or if you don't want that, you can just sew right until that point right here. And you're gonna have a bar tag which secures that corner and prevents it from opening up, even if there is tension on there, which there will be tension on there because the bodice is gonna pull here. And then from that point upwards, there's nothing to pull back basically. So it's starting to pull on the shoulder straps where the corners are the weakest points and that's gonna have a lot of tension. Therefore, it's prone to ripping out. Therefore, it's very important to just sew up until that point right there on both sides to prevent any ripping. So I'm gonna put right sides together of both of the side front pieces and the front piece and close the front dividing seam. Right here at the notch, we have to cut towards the seam in order to be able to work further with the lining and then also to iron this nicely because we want to iron this seam towards the side. Now the seam is bubbling up because we have a curve here. You can see it right here at the bust notch. So to prevent that, we're actually gonna cut into our seam allowance and cut these triangles out of our seam allowance so that it lays nicer and flatter. And then same to below the bust uh, area, we want to cut towards the stitching line like this because there's gonna be tension in the other direction. So we're gonna prevent any tension that way. Okay. 
So let's continue with the back pieces. We have a dart that we have to close, so we're gonna put right sides of the back piece together and top stitch the darts. I like to use my tailor's ham to iron the dart towards the back seam. Now we're gonna put right sides together of the front and back pieces and close the shoulder seam. Okay, so the outer layer, the fashion fabric, is now done for the bodice, basically, minus the sleeves. So we are going to continue with our lining. So this is my lining. So it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna close the darts in the front and the back pieces. I cut out my darts for the front because it's a pretty wide one and it just wouldn't lay nicely. So I just cut it out and I'm just gonna follow my drawn in stitching line right here and then we're also gonna close the shoulder seam so we're gonna end up with the same piece as we have for our fascia fabric minus the dividing seams and the lace up because then we can continue putting it together and finally also putting the sleeves in so that is the order of things that we're gonna do for this let's quickly do that okay so the lining for my bodice is now also done the same way as my outer fabric and we can start putting these two together. We're gonna put right sides of the lining onto our fashion fabric and what we're gonna do is only close the neckline, nothing else. Because the sleeves eye we're gonna use basically as one layer, we can overlock that and then we can put it together with the sleeve. In the center back there is gonna be the zipper, so we also don't want to close this as of right now. And the side seam we are also going to use as one layer. So basically what we also can do is just overlock around here. But the first thing that we need to do is close the neckline, so from here to here. And we're gonna put all of the notches together, so the shoulder seams, and then right here it's important. I like to just put a dot here into the corner so that I know where to match up my stitching line that we have in here. We have our stitching line that stops there. So we're gonna put a needle right into this cross right here. And that is how I like to match up my corners here. And now with that prepared, we can go ahead and close the neckline. So what I like to do now is to cut towards the stitching line at the rounded areas and then also here into the corner for the lining. Like that. So check here if you have a corner that can, you know, stretch the seam allowance to be straight because that is uh, what you need to have. If not, you need to cut away a few corners and edges of the fashion layer in order to do that, like this. And then we're also gonna cut towards the stitching line. And now I wanna try to understitch the seam. Understitching is when you fold the seam allowance towards the lining and then very closely to the ditch right here, top stitch all around your piece. Here in the corners you then have to like kind of stretch out the piece uh, which is why it's so important to have movement right here until we've reached the center back on the other side again. Okay, and now that we're done with that, we can iron the piece nicely. And the understitching is gonna help you do that because the fabric wants to lay like this already. As you can see right here, so it already turns however you want it to turn.
Okay, so as you can see, I already attached one sleeve just to see how everything looks and it worked out fine. So now we can go ahead and add the second sleeve. Before we do that, I did a few things. I first of all added an elastic here. There are notches in the sleeves, so you can just go from one sleeve side seam to the other and pull the elastic. So it's gonna have like this puff up here and then it's gonna um, be long and open up until your hand. I finished the hem of the sleeve by just double folding it and top stitching it. I overlocked the sleeve cap and side seams and that's basically all I did before gathering and putting the sleeve in the arm's eye. So let's do that together with the other sleeve. So what I will be doing first is overlocking around the sleeve minus the hem because we're double folding it anyways and adding the elastic. You're gonna find the notches here in the side seam, one here and then one on the other side. So I'm gonna turn it wrong sides facing up and I do that under the sewing machine. I hold my elastic at the notch and then pull while sewing and then just attaching it to the other notch on the other sleeve side and that makes it to cinch in like this. So let's do that. And this is what the sleeve looks like now. So we can go ahead and also do the hem right here. As I said, I did a double folded hem, which is what I will be doing here as well. You can do that also once the sleeve is in place and the side seam is closed. So whatever you feel like, I uh, like to do it now because it's just an, a flat surface and not a round surface. To get a neater finish here at the side seams and to not have this bulk here at the side seam and the hem, you can obviously do that after the side seam is closed. I think that's the better solution. I like to do it right now though, because that then you have less problems. Okay, now with the hem now done, as you can see, it looks really, really pretty. We can go ahead and gather the sleeve cap. I like to do that by using your biggest stitch without back tacking, stitching from one sleeve notch to the other into the seam allowance. So I like to start somewhere here and then go over here. Once I reach the other sleeve point, I like to go across and then go back to the beginning of our seam. That way you only have one side basically where you can pull and on the other side, the threads can't get loose basically because you pull on the same thread. So that is the method I like to use best. And then we're just gonna gather it to fit the arm's eye of the bodice. Right, so it's together. Make sure that you have the correct sleeve. You can always check for that by looking at your sleeve points. They have to align with the ones in your arm's eye. So the back sleeve point is further away from the sleeve side seam then the front sleeve point. Now I'm gonna put the marked shoulder point together with the shoulder seam right there and line up the side seams. And then I also like to make sure that my gathers lay nicely and evenly so that I avoid like a bunch of gathers here and then none of the shoulder point. So I like to just bunch up my gathers the most at my shoulder point that just looks the nicest. And here for the front, as you can see, there is not enough gathers yet in there, I can adjust that. And then also pin this in place. And now I can sew the sleeve into the arm's eye. To iron this, I like to put my sleeve and my bodice flat onto my ironing surface. And then the underarm seam right here, I like to just press flat with the seam allowance facing into the sleeve. And then I work my way up to the gathers. And then at the gathers, I am very careful as to not flatten out my gathers. So I keep it in the direction there where I want it to point to. And then I either steam only or with a little bit of pressure, I iron it towards the sleeve. And then once we have this in the shape where it will be worn in, it's gonna add like this really nice puff at the shoulder area. Now to finish the bodice, we just have to put our side seams together. From the waistline in the bodice, I like to work my way towards the sleeve hem. That way the underarm seam right here is forced to lay the correct way, meaning facing into the sleeve already. And then 
I make sure the elastic matches up and I also want to catch the elastic while sewing over top here just to ensure it stays in place and it's not gonna rip out accidentally while wearing. And now I can go from here all the way over here and close the side seams. Now I like to iron the seam allowance open, so let's turn this wrong sides out again. And with that, the bodice is complete. Let's do the skirts. And I'm gonna do two skirts, as I already mentioned, just because of the lack of fabric that I had. So I'm gonna have like an overlay skirt with this beautiful fabric. And then the other one that sits a bit lower is out of the satin. And I'm just gonna layer them up here. So basically what these are, are just rectangles and they work both the same way. So. I'm just gonna show you with one fabric. And since I'm working with salvage edges, which you probably will be working with too, as you just cut salvage to salvage, you don't have to finish the edges, the salvage edges, because they are already finished. So that's really nice. What I will be doing is putting all of these together to form one long panel for every even number two four panels whatever you have to cut one in half in order to not have a seam in your center front if you have your zipper in the back if you have three panels or any odd number you don't have to worry about that problem if that makes sense i hope it does so i'm gonna do that cut this in half now I have raw edges here that I will be overlocking and now I'm gonna put all of these panels together starting one with one half of a panel and ending with one half of a panel so these both sit at the center back. Okay, so everything is now sewn together. As you can see, I started with half a panel, overlocked the center back, iron the seam allowances, the salvage edges apart, just so once I do my hem, I don't have like a bulky fold, as I will be doing a double fold here as well. Also, if you have a direction in your fabric, make sure to keep the correct direction. So all of my flowers point upwards in this direction now. I made sure to do that for all of my panels. To avoid any more fraying than uh, the fabric already has, as you can see, it's uh, wildly fraying. I'm just gonna overlock all around my skirt panel. As you can see, it's pretty long, so it's gonna be a very poofy skirt, which I'm very happy about. So let's overlock. And then afterwards, once I'm done with that, I'm also going to gather, this is my waistline as my flowers go upwards, I'm also going to gather this to fit the waistline of my bodice. I probably will be doing that with my gathering foot though. You can obviously do that by hand by just double stitching into the seam allowance as you did for the sleeves and then just pulling on the bobbin threads. I finally managed to gather up the skirt as much as possible to fit my bodice right here. And now I can put these together, trying to match up the center front in the skirt with the center front in the bodice. Obviously, I'm gonna still add the other layer to this whole thing, but I think I'm gonna base this in place nevertheless. Probably it's the best to iron the gathers first so that everything faces the right, right direction and not iron but like steam okay now i think it's easier to put these two together as this is just laying in one direction and it's not moving as much anymore I am thinking about how I want to attach the lining skirt because it's getting bulky. 
up here and I don't want this to be you know super thick or like thicker than it needs to be so I'm kind of thinking on what my options are obviously I could hand sew this in place don't really want to though so my idea was to just overlap it a tiny bit so my seam allowance of my fashion skirt and the bodice ends here and now I'm thinking if I overlap the seam allowance or like the gathering of the lining skirt one centimeter higher than that and understitch this seam and therefore catching the lining as well I might have a less bulky waist I don't know I'm not sure but that's at least what I will be trying so I just went ahead and started pinning the lining skirt just over top of the bulk of the waistline but I came to the conclusion that I have to iron this first because otherwise the uh, seam allowance here of the waistline just wouldn't stay upwards so I will be going from the right side of the fabric and then staying with the iron mostly on the bodice side as to not flatten the ruffles. I will be going over from here to the other side. And now hopefully this will all stay facing upwards. Oh by the way I also went ahead and finished the hem of my fashion fabric skirt. It's just a double fold with a top stitch. So I am gonna try to make this as even as possible. So I'm aligning my center front here with the center front of my bodice. And now hopefully, once I understitch this from the right side of my dress, I'm gonna have a nice even way of fixing my lining skirt in place, hopefully. Okay, let's try it. Okay. This is what it ended up looking like. I just put it two to three centimeters higher than the gathered line here for my fashion fabric and understitched the seam. The understitching caught the lining skirt and I just put it like around my body just to see how it fits and if it bulges up too much around the waist. And I think because the waist now has about three centimeters width if that makes sense it like looks nicely and it's not bulking up too much like it's more evenly spread out if that makes sense so i'm super happy with that decision and it worked out great so we can finally put the zipper in place and finish this dress and what i will be doing for this is what i always do if you follow this channel for a longer time you should be a master of inseam zippers <laughs> because i basically use them for every project and i always use my proven method that's what I will be doing here as well I will be using a 45 centimeter zipper going from all the way up here at the neck down to somewhere inside the skirt you will find the notches for that in the pattern of course as I always do I will keep the lining fabric and the fashion layer together as and treat it as one layer until the zipper notch and from there we're gonna finish the skirt and the remaining open center back seam separately for both of the skirts so it can roam freely on the back okay so that's that now to finish off the center back i'm gonna put both of the skirts separately together right sides and using a one-sided zipper foot i'm gonna try to go as closely to the stitching line where we stopped with the zipper as possible making sure that while I might not be able to stitch right to the uh, zipper notch I'm gonna try to stitch and continue on the center back seam so that makes the best result in the end and I'm gonna do the same for the lining skirt like that and then we are finished with the dress Let's iron both of these seams open and then we still have to do the lacing in the front and then we're done. I did it again. <laughs> I always forget a few things and I always say this is the last step and then we're done and then we're never done. 
Oh, also to hide these things up here of the zipper, you can just fold it down, like between seam allowance and bodice, fold it back and it disappears like this. That's what it looks like from the inside then. And you can just hand stitch that in place or use a bar tag, whatever you want, to keep the upper part of the zipper invisible basically. So I'm unfolding it, folding it down into the seam allowance and then folding it back out. I'm just quickly gonna do a bar tag somewhere here. Now I'm gonna do the lace up with this green satin band that I also did the loops here with as well. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I wanted to do something a bit different maybe for an upcoming video. So I have a favor to ask you. I want to do some sewing challenges, if that makes sense. So I was thinking about making a, a video about a design that comes from you. So basically you draw something and I pattern it and make it. Obviously this can't be a crazy couture dress because that is not something that I can make and not fit in one video, but something that has a similar size and effort like this dress, for example, or anything else that you see on my channel that is a one part video. So that is like somewhat of the guide that I want to give you. And I'd like to ask you to just draw or express somehow, you can also describe it or do everything of what I just said, a design that you like to see come to reality basically that you like me to make. I will leave a figurine down in the description below that you can download and then draw your design on. You can do that on the computer or print it out by hand and scan it back in. That is totally up to you. You can do it by drawing, you can do any other way of expressing. You're totally free to do whatever you feel comfortable with as long as you know, another person can understand what you mean. So that is something that I'd like to experiment with and that I'd like to do in the future maybe. So go ahead and send your sketch, your designer to this email address right here. And you might be one of the designs that I choose for an upcoming video. So thank you so much. If you take part in that, that would be amazing. And let's see what we're gonna do with that in the future. So to not miss any videos or that specific video in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sunday so you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, go ahead and check out my social media. The handle is exactly the same as here on my YouTube. Also, the links to all my social media are in the description down below. So thank you so much for your follow there. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to check out my Etsy store where you can find this pattern that I made today as well as so many other patterns which all have video tutorials here on my channel. So thank you so much for checking that out and supporting me. If you're interested in a few more benefits here on my channel, go check out the channel membership. A link is also down in the description down below. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys.